Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing that seems to be happening too, although the evidence on this is mixed, is you know, increasingly, universities, especially on the arts side of 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 the spectrum, let's say, are dominated by females. It's about two to one in many places now. But turns out that the women stop attending once the ratio falls below two to one, and unsurprisingly, because as I said, part of the reason that universities exist is so that young people can go off and find a viable mate, and if that function has been decimated, and it, it's already been decimated, because the picture is actually more dreadful than you'd expect just looking at the two to one ratio, because it doesn't mean there's two girls for every guy like the Beach Boys song. It means that the pool of eligible men has shrunk to almost non-existent, and well, the pool of desperate men has remained the same. And <laughs> That's, that's technically true, and this is very frustrating for young women, and so the, the men are starting to bail out of the universities like mad, and that's been happening really over about a 20-year period, but when the boys leave, the girls will leave too, so it'll just take longer. So, now, will that be a net benefit in terms of freedom of speech? I don't know. Things are so unstable right now and changing so rapidly. I, I can't really claim to see more than about six months to a year ahead at most. I mean, not, not, not only because things are so stable and strange politically, but there are things, and everyone on, in the audience should know this, there are things coming down the pipeline on the artificial intelligence front that are just going to make your hair stand on end within the next year. Because there is so much transformation going on in that domain. And, and that's been the case particularly for the last six months that it, it, it's, it's almost unimaginable. You're going to see things you just can't possibly... How many of you clap? How many of you know what chat GBT is? Okay. So, well, I'll, not very many. So, I'll tell you what chat GPT is, just so you know, because you need to know this. And I don't know what sort of technological revolution this is. Gutenberg press level? It's something like that. This is a big deal. So, this AI system, it's a general language processing model, was released about a week ago, a week and a half ago, and uh, I, I went and interacted with it. You can, it's an AI system, artificial intelligence system. It basically is trained on, well, a massive corpus of, of spoken and, or of text. So it's derived its models of the world from the analysis of human speech, essentially. It, it isn't using real world data yet, but that will be happening certainly within the next year. So, and chat GPT analyzes a very large corpus of text and that corpus is growing all the time. Now it's already sophisticated enough. I went on to it last week and I said, okay, some of you know I, I've written these books, 12 Rules for Life and then Beyond Order, 12 more rules because you know, you can't have enough rules. And I asked it, this is what I asked it to do. I said, write me an essay that's a 13th rule for beyond order, written in a style that combines the King James Bible with the Tao Te Ching. That's a pretty difficult, that's pretty difficult to pull off, you know? Any one of those things is hard. The intersection of all three, that's impossible. Well, it wrote it in about three seconds, four pages long, and it isn't obvious to me, for better or worse, that I would be able to tell that I didn't write it. Right, right, and okay, and that's pretty impressive, although, you know, maybe not its relationship to what I've written, but the fact that it could do that grammatically perfectly, right, and quite impressive philosophically. I also had it write an essay on the intersection between the Taoist version of ethical morality and the ethics that are outlined in the Sermon on the Mount, which it just nailed, got that dead right, Br brilliant. Again, it took it about three seconds. There was a, a computer engineer who purported to work for Tesla. He asked GPT, chat GPT, he said, look, I work for Elon Musk, but I haven't been doing much for the last week, so I need you to write me 10 bullet points about what I probably would have done as a, as a engineer at Twitter, what 10 things did I do last week that were productive and valuable, and oh, if you don't mind, write me the accompanying computer code that goes with each project. And it did that too, three seconds, and the computer code works. 
Right, and so, okay, so that's, that's already there. So then a university professor did this. He thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Any student will be able to write any essay on any topic with chat GPT. And uh, someone gave it an SAT, by the way, and it scored about as well as the average student in a well-functioning public university. So that's how smart it is. So that's basically an IQ test. He said, write me an essay, gave it a topic, wrote the essay. He said, now grade it said, if we can automate the students, we should be able to automate the professors, too. And so it provided a complete comprehensive analysis of its own essay with grade. It wrote, uh, someone else asked it, write the screenplay and describe the characters for the next $900 million Hollywood blockbuster. It's like, bang, plot, characterizations. Then someone else took the descriptions of the actors and said, generate computer, photorealistic computer images for each actor. And, it did, and all the AI systems could do that. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. This is going to happen this year. So get ready. Okay, so now we have an AI model that can extract a model of the world from the entire corpus of language. All right, and it's, it's smarter than you. And it's going to be a hell of a lot smarter than you in two years. So you can get ready for that too. But it's not that smart yet because it's just a humanities professor at the moment. It doesn't test its linguistic knowledge against the real world. That's what a scientist does, right? You come up with a theory that's linguistically predicated and then you throw it against the world and see if it sticks. And then the world tells you whether or not your linguistic construction is valid. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world, and so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. And so, and all of that's going to come down the pipes within the next year. So hang on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because what did my friend Jonathan Pajo say? Giants are going to walk the earth once more, and we're going to live through that maybe. So, anyways, 